All right, welcome back class. So this week is our mental health awareness week and we are today going to be talking about a pretty heavy subject. So please be respectful and mature as to what people around you might be going through. Um, today's subject is talking about coping with grief. Now grief is when we've lost something or someone that was really close to us. We're gonna talk about the process. We're gonna talk about how to cope with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and present my screen with you. Now, as I present my screen, I am going on to our weekly slideshow, October 19th. You look at Wednesday. So today's lesson is called Coping with Grief. When you click here for the assignment, it is going to be our notes. You're gonna be answering the do not question and then taking some notes. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the lesson. Now, today's lesson isn't long, but it, like I said, is pretty heavy. And then they'll be do, you'll be doing an activity at the end that might take some time. So when you go ahead and open up your assignment, here's your do now question. Explain how you feel when you experience loss or grief. So I'll give you some time. So explain how you feel when you experience a loss or grief. Maybe it could be emotional feelings, physical feelings, what thoughts, what do you go through? After you answer that, We'll move on to the next slide. So coping with loss and grief, there's so many avenues or situations that might cause someone grief. So for example, moving to a new city. If I lived in Chickasha, Oklahoma, from birth until maybe freshman year of high school, and then my family says, hey, we got a new job opportunity, we're now moving to maybe Oklahoma City, or maybe even moving across state lines to Missouri. That can be someone dealing with loss, the loss of their hometown, the loss of the friendships they've made. Um, they could be grieving the, the loss of some of those relationships. Um, obviously, it could be a loved one who passes away. It could be a pet. Like some of you guys who know my dogs, they are like extensions of my family. Um, anytime someone close to you passes away, you go through grief. Um, it could be a breakup of a relationship, whether it might be my parents ended up getting a divorce. I'm dealing with the loss of having both my parents together. It could be maybe um, when you guys have been with someone, your significant other, hopefully it's like 10, 15 years from now. And maybe after several years that has broken up and you go through some emotions of dealing with the loss and grief of that. And I want you guys to see at the bottom, grieving is natural and it's common reaction to any loss. However, we want loss. Loss is going to feel hurtful, but we don't want it to be harmful. So we're going to be going through the process in ways we can help ourselves get through these tough times in our lives. So how do you deal with the grieving process? Well, number one, acknowledge your pain. Um, acknowledge what is hurting us. Uh, what are uh, What's the tough situation in our life that we're going through? Accept any grief that may trigger different or unexpected emotions. Um, I might go from, we'll learn here in a second, from frustrated to angry, to guilt, to hopeless. So you're gonna be going through a lot of emotions. Understand that your grieving process is unique to you. This is huge. A support from people who care about you. Um, it's also supporting yourself emotionally by taking care of you also physically. Taking care of your mental and emotional. Remember we talked about very first lesson in health, your triangle. You got your emotional, mental, you got your social, and you got your physical. It's being able to take care of all sides of that triangle to make you nice and balanced. And then obviously recognizing the difference between grief and depression. So we talked about depression yesterday. And we've talked about we all go through adjustment disorders where if my grandma passes away, I'm going to go through some depressed feelings, but hopefully I'm able to move myself through them and, and start moving on with my life. Doesn't mean I forget about it. Now, if you feel like you're in a funk, then that's depression. It might not be a specific event. You could be having a whole bunch of happy things going on around you. You just can't get out of it. That could be more along the lines of depression. Grief, it's understandable to feel that way. All right, so in your notes, I want you to go ahead and write these eight steps. Well, not steps, but eight key parts to a grieving process. Um, there's a lot of grieving processes. There might be five, there might be six, but these are like the true eight 
levels of a grieving process. Now, I want you guys to understand these eight levels, you don't go in them in, in order. You might go from one to four to two to seven, back to one. You might be bouncing around them all. I might be in one for two weeks, whereas someone else might be in one for one week. I might be stuck in five for three years where someone might just be in five for two days. So like I said, it is unique to the individual. Let people grieve the way they need to grieve. Be there for them. Be that umbrella to support them. Obviously, we want to make sure they're grieving in a healthy manner, which we'll talk about here in a second. But these are the stages of the grieving process. So the first stage is denial. Obviously, it's difficult to believe. Um, now, obviously, the main grief people think of is probably when someone passes away. Like I said, it could be anything you've lost, like the relationship or moved away. But we'll focus on if someone's passed away. You're going to go through denial. It, it's hard to believe that. Um, I get the phone call that my buddy's fiance passed away. It What? It, there's no way. You're in denial of it. Um, the second stage is emotional release. That's when you start recognizing that person is gone, right? Or that thing you had, maybe that relationship you had, and the emotions start just coming out. Um, you might go through anger. You are angry at everything. You become powerless. Bargaining. You might promise changes to bring someone back. Like, I promise, I promise, promise, please bring this person back, and I will be a better person. I promise, I promise. You might start bargaining. I mean, you're going to go through some depression, some isolation, some hopelessness. Now, like I said, hopefully we have people around us that can help us through this process, allow us to feel these feelings, but also be there to make sure we're, we're feeling them in a healthy way. Um, remorse. You might start thinking about what could you have done to prevent that? Um, when my buddy's fiance got killed by a car accident, he kept thinking, I should have picked her up from work that night. I should have done that. I should have done that. You start feeling that, those guilt feelings, right? Seven and eight is when you're able to maybe work through stages one through six and you start having acceptance of it. You're starting to close the doors. It doesn't mean you're forgetting about that person or that relationship or whatever you lost, but you're starting to accept it, right? But you lead to eight. You remember the good times. It's less painful. It's more the positive and it allows you to move forward. Now, it doesn't mean once you hit seven or eight, you might not ever go through these again, but you'll go through these less when you get to that seven and eight stage. Now, like I said, I could be in the grieving process for years. It might take someone a couple of weeks. We are no one, no one to judge how long it takes someone to grieve. We just need to be there for them. And obviously if it turns into unhealthy, then hopefully we could send them to someone to help them process these feelings. All right, next slide are, these are emotional symptoms of grief. So obviously you're gonna feel shock and, and disbelief. It's hard to accept it. You might feel numb. It's just so much a shock, right? Then obviously the sadness, those are your emotional. Um, you're going to feel empty. You're going to experience a lot of crying. You're going to feel like you're unstable a lot. You might have those guilt feelings. Like I said, I feel guilty. I should have been there for, more for my grandparents. If your grandparents have passed away, I should have done this. I should have done that. You're going to feel those guilt feelings. So to tell you right now, the people you love, let them know you love them. Enjoy the time you have with them because like I said, life, you never know what's going to happen. So please, please, please to avoid a lot of these guilt feelings. Take care of your relationships with those around you. Um, another emotional symptom could be anger. Even though it might not be anyone's fault, you might still feel angry and resentful, right? You might be angry at yourself. Um, those of you guys who believe in God, you might be angry at God, maybe the doctors. And that's okay. You might be angry at the person who died because how could you? You left me. How, how could you have done this? right? You might feel like you have to blame someone else. So these are normal feelings that people go through. And obviously the, the emotional feeling of fear, maybe when I start seeing my grandparents pass away and then maybe I start seeing people around my age start pass away, they might start thinking, man, these are people close to me. Like I might start getting fear of, am I going to be pa passing away soon? So it might cause some fear and some panic attacks as well. Now, some physical symptoms of grief, so obviously you might be feeling as emotional, but you're going to start feeling, you're going to be really tired. You might, if you had a huge loss in your life, you're going to feel really fatigued, especially if you had a lot of th things on your mind and you're thinking about all these emotions, it's going to wear you out. I told you guys how you're mental and emotional. It takes a toll on us physically. You might make yourself sick. You guys know if you get so angry or so frustrated or so confused, it you might be making yourself sick and nausea, that's that. I feel like I got a throw up type of feeling. 
um, lowered immunity, you're more likely to get sick, right? Because you're not taking care of yourself. You're not taking care of yourself mentally, then it takes a toll on us physically. It could be weight loss or weight gain. We talked about the two extremes. You might start feeling aches and pains or there's insomnia. It's hard for you to sleep. So we talked about if you have trouble sleeping, what can I do? Maybe talking to someone, maybe writing my feelings out, maybe exercising, maybe doing something positive hobby to help guide me through these feelings, right? And then hopefully it'll take care of all these other physical symptoms I might be feeling. Now, how to cope with death. Number one I have on here is show empathy. Empathy is when you can literally put yourself in someone else's shoes. So if I know someone close to me or someone around me is dealing with grief, how can I help them show empathy? Help them recall happy, positive memories. Be a sympathetic listener. Sometimes just don't say anything, just be there for them. And like I said down here, don't rush the grieving process. Don't judge people. Everyone goes through grief on their own terms. Okay, now, when it comes to like cultural disasters or cultural losses, and we know in Oklahoma, biggest one here is tornadoes. I mean, you just see the community support. That's how we help others cope with death or cope with loss. I lost my family home. I lost all of my memories, all, all of the material memories of that house. What do we do? We can be there for each other, support each other. Um, and that's what I put down there at the bottom. Also, like, unfortunately, terrorist actions. What do we do as a community, as a state, as a world? We help each other out. Okay, so right now in our notes, in your guys' notes, I want you guys to take this time to write a letter to someone that was close to you. So this is someone that has either moved on, passed away. Maybe this is a friendship you had years ago and maybe you had a big disagreement and you're not friends as of now. Maybe, like I said, it's someone that was close to you and unfortunately passed away. Maybe it's your pet, your favorite pet that you grew up with for 15 years and your pet has now passed on. Maybe you moved to a new city and you lost your home. You lost your hometown friendships. So it's something that you've lost in that you're going through some mixed feelings of grieving with. So I want you guys to write a letter to someone that was close to you. You share all your feelings, your memories. Maybe it could just be your time to let some anger out, let some of your feelings out, right? Now, in your notes, I'm going to mark points for completing this, but I will not read them. You can trust me on that. I will not read these. I just need to see at the bottom of your notes on your assignment, I need to see dear and then whoever you're writing it to. And then, like I said, I want to see some sort of a letter there. I'm not going to read it. You could trust me on that. Um, but I do challenge you to get all your feelings out. I know when my grandpa passed away, I told my traditional classes the night before I knew my grandpa had less than 24 hours to live. He that was battling cancer and passed away from that. He lived in California. I was able to write all my feelings out. I composed a letter, emailed it to my mom, who was actually in California at the time, and she was able to read it to my grandpa. And I know within 12 hours of that time slot, he passed away. So it made me feel so much better knowing he was able to hear and just getting my memories out there and just all my feelings out there. That was a huge help for me. That doesn't mean I didn't go through the grieving process and it still hurts. But now I know when I talk about my grandpa and my grandpa was like my dad. I know when I talk about my grandpa, I'm able to one, live like him. I'm able to share my experiences with him. I'm able to be the type of person I know he would be proud to proud of. Um, so it's that hope, that acceptance that I'm able to move on to. Doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. Doesn't mean I might not get teary eyed every now and then. But it's nice knowing that I was able to get my feelings and thoughts out and share them to them. Now, you might say, well, Coach Global, my person's not alive anymore. Well, sometimes just getting your thoughts and feelings out, that person can still hear you. That person knows how much you care about them. So at this time, I do want you guys to take time to write a letter. Like I said, I will not read it. Trust me on that. I just want to see that you have something down there in your notes. Now, with that being said, that is the end of our lesson today. I told you it was a short lesson, but it's a pretty big, heavy, tough topic to talk about grief. Unfortunately, it happens. Some of us, it happens more to than others. Some of us are going through it right now. Um, I know life gets tough. Just know we are all there for each other. Just like you have your umbrella for stress and anxiety, we got to start taking care of us. I wish I could just snap my fingers and say, there's never going to be anything horrible in this world. We're never going to have to experience grief. But unfortunately, that's part of life. 
and it hurts, but we got to make sure it's not harmful. We got to make sure we're able to get through these feelings, maybe have others help us get through them and then be able to accept it and move on. And number one thing is don't rush anyone. This is their grieving process. Let them feel it. Just be there for them. So with that being said, you guys all know you have me here. If you need an email, you want some advice, you just need to talk. Um, I am here for you. So hopefully we are able to take care of ourselves and I will see you guys tomorrow. All right. See ya. Bye.